Welcome to our show today. Believe it or not, we're gonna try to make food that matches the Ten Commandments. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're making some Middle Eastern Mediterranean style food. We got a leg of lamb. We've got baba ghanoush. We're gonna have some watermelon salad. And uh, one last little surprise, some cake for us with berries. But before I do that, I've got to do some shopping today. So we're on the west side of Buffalo, New York, a neighborhood that was rich in Italian heritage. We're going to one of the old stores here from 1961, Gershio's Food Market. I'm going to see what I need for today's menu. Okay, well, we need some uh, lemons. Lemons always say Mediterranean, don't they? Southern Italy. Okay, maybe I'll get uh, two of those should be fine. I'm gonna grab a lime just in case. Do you know how you tell how to pick a good watermelon? I don't know either, so. We need a couple eggplant, huh? I'm gonna go for the smaller one. How come I'm number two, but it's number 73? Oh, now it's 83. Now it's 105. Yeah. Now it's three. I like it here because they call me honey, you know. Uh, this is sandwich time at Gershio's. Is there anybody who couldn't be on TV because you're a criminal or you're cheating on your spouse or anything? No? Okay. They're okay, I think. Yeah, all right. Does anybody go to church? I'm Father Paul. Hey, does anybody know the Ten Commandments? We're doing a TV show. Everybody remembers thou shalt. Well, wait a minute. Wow. Oh, you're, you're good. Oh, God. Oh, Thou God. shalt not kill. Okay. Thou have you, have you, you've kept that one? Uh, this is true. I yes. have not killed not anyone. Covet your neighbor's wife. Right. Yes, good. Yeah. How are you Do on that one? Do not steal. Do not steal. We got steal twice. Okay. Uh, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Yeah, that's one. You should only have one God, the true God. God. Yeah, that, okay. You have no other gods before you? Yeah. Well, we're doing pretty good. How many of them do you think you keep? Uh, Most of them? Uh, I don't know. All of them? Eight or nine. Most, I'd say most. <laughs> Here's some on sale. Oh, you can't beat this. Oven baked cake from Italy. Hey. These are neat. Can people grow these locally or what? Yeah. They make fruit or what? These are fig trees. Yeah, it huh? takes about two or three years. Two or three years. Well, yeah. They're big leaves, aren't they? Yeah. Adam and Eve used those in the Garden of Eden. Did you know that? They covered themselves up with fig leaves, fig leaves, fig leaves. Yeah, big leaves. Thank you. Do you have a, you have a parish that you belong to, or what? Yeah, Lady of Hope. Oh, you're right over here, then, huh? Yeah. yeah. How's it going there? Good. Good. Do you know the Ten Commandments? Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time at Gershio's walking around the west side a little bit, enjoying the food and the people and learning what they thought and what they remembered about the Ten Commandments. And today on the show, we're going to cook, before we, we left for Gershio's, by the way, I put this butterfly leg of lamb. What is butterfly? It means the bone's off. It's rolled open. You can get your butcher to do that, or a lot of times you can buy it like that. I put a little balsamic glaze over it, but you could use balsamic vinegar or really any kind of vinegar to give it a little acid. I put some salt and pepper on it. I put a little bit of uh, Dijon style mustard on top, some chopped up garlic. Uh, there's a little olive oil in there. You could use wine if you'd like too, any of those things. Set it in the refrigerator for a few hours. Took it out about half an hour ago, let it come to room temperature. Now our grill is set at about 400, well, it's gotten up to about 400 degrees. You want at least that high to sear the meat. We're gonna cook the leg of lamb on the grill uh, and we're going to bring it up to an internal temperature of about 165 degrees, and that will give us lamb that is medium rare. There we go. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this oil over. It's gonna flare up, but that's okay. There we go. Oh, yes. That'll give it a nice smoky flavor. So while our, our lamb is starting to cook, we're gonna go to the next thing. Now, by the way, if you're a little bit leery of lamb, lamb doesn't really taste very gamey like it did years ago. In fact, lamb is kind of uh, domesticated now and really fits more of the American taste. So it's, it's really a great dish to try from time to time. And of course, very traditional for Middle Eastern or Mediterranean cuisine. Now, by the way, we're talking about the Ten Commandments today. Sometimes we call it 
the Decalogue. The Decalogue, the law, the Ten Laws. You know, the, the movie where, uh, you know, Charlton Heston brings down the Ten Commandments, Moses from the Mount Sinai. And that was the beginning of order and law under the covenant that the, Israeli, the Israelites made with God. You know, now, by the way, two eggplants, medium size, nice ones. I poke them with a, a little holes with a fork and then I put them in the oven for about, uh, oh, what, about 400 degrees for about a half an hour until they get kind of really soft. And I'm going to take the skin off, and that's going to be the start of our dish called baba ganoush, which if you, have, uh, if you like hummus or things like that, it, it's also kind of a spread for bread or crackers or that, but it's really very tasty and a little bit different. And it's really easy, easy to do. Okay, so our first uh, commandment, is uh, I'm the Lord your God, have no foreign gods before you. And of course, we knew that, know what that meant to the ancient Jewish people, but what does it mean to us today? Well, it could be different things. It could be with a social justice aspect. It could be, you know, making sure that we share the goodness of the earth with others as God, we believe as Catholic Christians, God intended us to share to share the bounty that is his and not to have things before us like just the pursuit of material things or just the pursuit of money or finances. By the way, after you skin these and take the stem off, we're going to drop this in a food processor with the seeds in it. You could remove the seeds if you'd like. So, you know, Jesus in the New Testament, the Christians, sometimes we call the Old Testament the Hebrew Scriptures, and sometimes we call the New Testament the Christian scriptures, but for Christians, I mean, it's all the word of God. It's all the word of God. The second commandment is, do not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Now, we all kind of know what that means, right? We don't, we're not going to be saying, you know, you know what I'm talking about. We don't take the name of the Son of God. We don't take the name of God. We just don't yell it out, you know, in, in, in kind of aggravation or something. Although you hear it sometimes, especially on golf courses, I think. But you don't want to take the name of the Lord thy God in vain because the Word of God and the name of God is very sacred. It's holy to us who are Christians as it was to our Jewish ancestors and Jewish people today. As a matter of fact, the word that means is the name of God is never spoken in Judaism, is never spoken. Instead of the formal name of God, which I dare not even say because I wouldn't want to offend anybody who's watching today, the name of God is so sacred that the Jewish people called God by Adonai, Adonai. And that word itself simply means the name. So whenever they were like reading scriptures and they'd hear the word the name, they knew who that meant. The God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Israel. Okay, I'm just going to get a cut. I like garlic. You can use one clove, you can use two cloves, you can use three cloves. You know, you, you do it however you like to do it. Okay, so we got garlic and we've got uh, the, the, uh, the, the baked eggplant. Okay, let me start with this first. Okay, there we go. Just going to get it going a little bit. Now this is tahini and you can get it in most stores now. This is really a sesame seed paste and this is going to offer a wonderful flavor. Maybe you want like a, oh, a quarter of a cup or so. Uh, it has a very, uh, very distinctive flavor of the sesame seeds. A little bit of salt. We can taste that later to see that it's the right amount of salt. A little bit of pepper, just a little bit. Uh, a bit of cumin, which adds a very distinctive flavor. I like a little more than the average person likes, so be careful with that. It's very, very distinctive, the flavor. Um, and then we're going to use a lemon, and we're going to put in the juice of at least a half a lemon, depending on how big and juicy your lemon is. And oh, we'll watch our seeds there, okay. Yeah, just enough to give it a nice lemony flavor. Now let's give this a whirl. Now here's how they do it in the Middle East right now. They spread it around like this, okay? And then in the center you're going to put and drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. There we go. The final crowning little bit of color and flavor is this freshness that comes from our 
parsley, and I'm using curly parsley for this. That's right out of the garden. That smells so fresh. Now, third, uh, the third commandment, what is that one? Oh, keep holy the Sabbath day. Oh, that's a good one. It's not only good for religious people to remember that, you know, in the book of Genesis, even God worked, but on the, on the seventh day it said he, he rested. God rested. So who are we not to rest one day a week? It's not only good for people of faith and religion, but it's also good for everyone. And really employees, and em or employers rather, to, to remember to let their employees have some time off. You know, Americans, it said, take the least amount of vacation time of anyone in the world, of any society. These are uh, pita breads, and I warmed them up really good on the grill. Let me go check the lamb, see where we are with that. All right. Oh, this looks good. This looks very good. Oh, there we go. We got the one side. Oh, look at the char on that. Isn't that beautiful? That's going to be tasty. We'll be back. Let's see the fourth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother. Fifth, sixth. I think we'll get through them all. But don't go away. We'll be back with some more recipes and our lamb and baba ganoush and a couple more on our daily bread right after this. Now, one thing I'm missing is my cumin. Where is my cumin? All right. Ah, fix your own collar. I always grill in my collar. Welcome back to our Daily Bread. We're talking about the Ten Commandments today and we're making some Middle Eastern Mediterranean style food. We got a leg of lamb on the grill. We've got baba ghanoush. We're gonna have some watermelon salad and uh, one last little surprise, some cake for us with berries. Not very Mediterranean, but it'll taste good. Okay, we left off at uh, the fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. And that's, that's a very interesting one because as with all the 10 commandments, it just doesn't have to do with honoring specifically your mother and your father. But it speaks really about the importance of the family unit, that everyone is worthy of dignity and respect. You know, so, so that's where we come into honor thy father and thy mother. It, it, it extends to honoring families and to recognizing that the family is really the building stone for our society itself. So I've got some uh, roasted red peppers and yellow peppers here, they're sweet. I didn't even seed them or stem them because I'm just going to throw, throw them into our watermelon salad, kind of, uh, you know, au naturel. I've also got some uh, little cherry or grape tomatoes that you could put in. And again, you know, this is a very easy recipe. The really, the only thing you need to make a feta and watermelon salad is really feta cheese and watermelon. But then we add a couple of other things I like. These are scorched tomatoes. I, I scorched them on a, a cast iron skillet on top of the stove. Now we're gonna make a little dressing for this. Now the fifth commandment is what? Oh, I like this one. Thou shalt not kill. You know, in the Catholic Church, we have a sacrament called penance, or sometimes called confession. And what happens with confession with penance? Well, you know, people come in, and a lot of times they'll say, bless me, Father, if I've said, well, I didn't kill anybody. We always start with that one. But of course, it's not just not killing anybody. You know, Jesus says in the New Testament, he says, you've heard it said, you shall not kill. What I tell you is, Anyone who is even angry with their sister or their brother commits an offense against the law, the law of love. So we're talking about literally killing, and everybody knows the teachings of the church on euthanasia and abortion and all of those things, but we need to take that even a step further to think about those issues which really impact on a human person, on their dignity. Sometimes we kill the spirit. Sometimes we're killing, you know, uh, in, in ways that are not murdering as such, but are taking away the enthusiasm or the opportunity or the ability to live in basic comfort and dignity of every human person. Now for this watermelon and feta, uh, I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, olive oil, probably about eh, two, three, two ounces or so, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of fresh mint, Whoop. and let me get that going a little bit here. 
This is going to be just a little basic dressing here, okay? Now let me drizzle. Oh, that mint smells really powerful and pungent. It's great. We'll put a little more oil in here. A little bit of more. I use white balsamic for a dressing usually. I like that. That's good. Okay. We've got the mint. And now I'm just going to put in this feta cheese. Several ounces, really. That's a good amount. Okay. I'm not going to like make this. I'm just going to keep this mostly whole. I just want to pulse this for a few seconds. Okay. That'll do it. Okay. Now, in our bowl, we're going to put watermelon. This is seedless watermelon. Though, even seedless watermelon has seeds, doesn't it? Now, the sixth commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. It has to do with something that is very uh, destructive to marriages and relationships, that time when there is a lack of faithfulness. And that's one of the things the church teaches about marriage itself is that it must be a faithful relationship exclusive to one another, to the exclusion of anyone else always. Here's our watermelon. Here's our peppers. I'm going to put in some of these tomatoes. You could probably cut them in half if you wanted to get a little more juice in there. I have washed my hands, by the way. Okay. Okay. That's going to go in here. Let's see, the seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. Ooh. Well, gee, I just took a pen from work, that's all. The thing about, you know, holiness is that we try to be better than we have been. That we try to be, as Jesus said, be perfected as the Heavenly Father is perfect. I'm going to just sprinkle a little more uh, fader right on the top here. And again, that'll add a little bit more of the saltiness that we want. I'm going to chop up some mint and this is really a very everything was chilled in the refrigerator i would put it back in the refrigerator and serve it chilled it's really great and it's wonderful for a picnic or you know you can make it in advance bring it in a uh, bring it in a uh, uh, ice insulated uh, carrier and it's just a, a great refreshing and really kind of a different kind of a, a salad than we usually have you could use cilantro on this if you want I, I put it very finely chopped two little red onions on the top as well, so that's good. That'll give you a lot of nice flavors. And again, anything that I use, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it whatever way you want. So we've got uh, not stealing. Everybody probably maybe has stolen something out of mom's purse when you were little or something like that. And then we get to the big things, and those are the challenging things. You know, the taxes with the IRS or taking something, like I said, a little something from the employer or from the employees. There is an honesty that has to come with the spiritual person that says it's important to recognize what is mine and what is not mine. And the last two commandments, I'm going to skip number eight and then I'm going to go back to it after nine and ten, because that also has to do with wanting things that maybe we shouldn't want. You know, I remember a spiritual director once said to me, you know, God has given us every good gift of food and drink, but it doesn't mean that we're supposed to consume it all. You know, we are consumers in America, aren't we, a lot of times? And we want this and that, and maybe we want something that the other person has or someone the other person has. And even in ancient times, God saw that that would be a problem, a difficulty. So don't covet your neighbor's spouse or their goods or their property or their home or the things they have instead to try to be happy with what we have. So I'm going to check the meat here and we want that temperature to be at 160 internally and I'm going to come back with the eighth of the Ten Commandments right after this. Don't go away. I'm going to, can I start that little segment over again? Oh, I got two bottles of olive oil. That's why I'm so confused. Okay. Would this be a dish that you might steal because, uh, no, wait, what commandment are we on? Six. And what's the sixth commandment? So not commit adultery. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, boy. Oh, you know what? You know what I forgot? I forgot. Uh... Cilantro. Oh. Cilantro? You bought cilantro. Yeah, I did, but I used the mint instead. You could use cilantro on this if you want.
Welcome back to our Daily Bread. Today we're talking about the Ten Commandments and we made also some great Middle Eastern Mediterranean style food. We made a leg of lamb on the grill, baba ghanoush, some watermelon and feta cheese salad. And our final thing here is a little dessert that is not really Mediterranean. It's like a panettone, but it's a butter cake. And what they do is they give you a little, the Italians are so efficient. They give you a little packet of powdered sugar and you pour it in the bag that comes in the box. Then you shake it up until, whoa! <laughs> well, you know, it could be simple. That's the problem with wearing black all the time. Everybody knows if you've had sugar. There we go. Okay, beautiful. How nice. Okay. Very simple dessert. You don't have to do hardly anything. I'm going to cut this down like this. This is, oh, isn't that beautiful? There's no fruit in it. It's not a regular panettone. It's like a panettone, but it's not. And let's, uh, let's do it this way. Mm, here, okay, we'll do, uh, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do, let me try the second one here. In fact, this one will be the tasting one to see if it's good. Very tasty, beautiful. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a little uh, Grand Marnier over it, just a touch. <laughs> That's a touch for some of us. You don't have to do that, obviously. You can do anything you want. Now, we went through the Ten Commandments. These are some mixed berries, obviously. We went through the Ten Commandments, and uh, we skipped. I skipped number eight for a reason, because I thought it would be a good way to end up. It's, you know, not to bear false witness. In other words, that is taken today as not to tell lies, to be a truthful, honest person. And doesn't, with human dignity, doesn't every person really deserve the truth about so many things? about relationships, about the environment, about our economy. We demand truth or we want truth from our political leaders, from our church leaders, from our family members. So that's the Eighth Commandment. And it ties in with the New Testament, the teachings of Jesus, in which he says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Remember, too, there is a part of the Bible, the New Testament, in which Jesus is asked by a lawyer, teacher, what is the greatest of the commandments? And he says, Hear, O Israel, this is the greatest. Hear, O Israel. And then he quotes the prayer he learned as a little boy, the teaching of the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and being. And then he adds one. He says, and the other is like it. The second one is almost as important. It is to love your neighbor as yourself. So, the Ten Commandments have relevance for us all today whether we are of religious persuasion or not. Hey, this is a great little thing. You put your cream in here, you pound it like that, and it, and, it, and it makes whipped cream for you. Now, I don't use anything in my whipped cream, no sugar, no nothing. I just like it au naturel, you know? And there you have a very lovely dessert. I'll bet that would be good with a little piece of mint on the top, huh? That looks pretty. And our internal temperature of the lamb is approximately 160 degrees. I turned off the grill a few minutes ago during our break and let it rest for a while. And so we have our lamb. There we go. Oh, oh, beautiful. Just a little bit pink inside. That's the way I like it. Let's see. And lamb is, uh, you know, you've got the, uh, a lot of the sinew in that. I didn't, I didn't take that all off. I cooked it with it on it. But you don't have to. You can, let me just... Put this knife here, I think it's going to work a little better. There we go, perfect. Okay, oh, beautiful. If you haven't had lamb, really, it's definitely worth a try, especially for uh, a special occasion or something like that. We have looked at the Ten Commandments today. We've heard what some people think of the Ten Commandments and what they remember the most. We made a lovely meal, and hopefully, too, we've learned a little bit more about ourselves and the way that we're brought together many times by ancient teachings, which can still, and many times are very relevant even to this day. Now let's see, I got a little bit of mint. You know, a lot of people put mint jelly on lamb, but I think just put the mint itself. We put that nice rub on there. It's good with mustard too, I like a little mustard. A little lemon juice on the top. Just a tiny bit of uh, an anointing with olive oil. If you need a little salt and pepper, you throw that on. 
And there's our lamb. Hey, this is great to be with you today. A wonderful time. I hope you take advantage of some of these recipes. Go to our website or our Facebook page. And I especially want to thank, you know, a lot of the information I got today was from the USCCB. That's the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops from their website. And you can go there as well and find different things about the Ten Commandments and the other teachings of our Catholic faith. Until next time, I'm Father Paul Sile, and God bless you and enjoy the food that God gives to us. Yeah. Cake the opposite way, it makes little stars. Well, why aren't you the one doing the show, number one? I just read And number the two, why don't you, why did you read it? Why didn't you tell me when it was? I thought you knew that. No, I don't know that. Now he tells me I cut the cake the wrong way. Oh, I didn't think I did. <laughs> well, you do. I need a little bowl, too, to put the fruit in.